because codependents yell at their inner child, so you can yell at Will Smith's inner child. But you don't know how, you don't know how to yell at Jada Smith's inner child. Because you never had felt enough power to yell at your inner child of your parent. You had to take care of your inner child of your parent. Yelling at the inner child of your parent was always taboo. There's no skill level to yell at abuser's inner child. <clears throat> that was an idea of trying to cover that as the advanced teaching today. Sort of, I had this clip. <clears throat> oh, which one is it? It's the mental model system, and I, I'll give you an example of a really bad mistake that I made using mental models. When I was a little kid, my grandmother had an ashtray that looked like a rattlesnake. It was a beautiful thing made out of stone, and it was very realistic. And I had this model in my head of a rattlesnake that was you know, benign, it was a harmless thing, and it had these nice emotional associations with my childhood and my grandmother, and frankly, I never thought about it again. I don't know where it went. But one day as an adult, I was hiking in the Santa Monica Mountains, and I came across the ruin of a stone house, and I, I thought, oh, cool, I'll, I'll look for a souvenir here. I'll find some old tool or something to bring home with me from this ruined house in this stone rubble. And I started searching around, and then all of a sudden, lo and behold, th there was my grandmother's ashtray. I'm like, what a miracle! My grandmother's ashtray. How did that happen? And I reached out to pick it Magically. up, and then I saw its tongue come out. And of course, I realized the very stupid mistake that I had made because I had all this intellectual knowledge that could have prevented me from doing that, but that didn't because I was operating on the mental model, the closest association I had, and it was stored away. I hadn't thought about it for decades, and it was my grandmother's ashtray. So I knew intellectually, for example, that the chances of finding my grandmother's ashtray anywhere in the known universe were approximately zero. I knew also that, that uh, I was in the mountain wilderness where rattlesnakes are really common in California. I knew that they like to poke around in stone ruins because mice live there. I knew all this stuff and it did me no good. So this is what I mean when I say smart people do stupid things. This is a, the type of mistake that certain scientists call an intelligent mistake because all my learning, my most important learning, caused the mistake. <clears throat> so a mental model is your conditioning, is what your body will say what's true, not true, what's safe, or what's not safe. It's not exactly the perfect thing, but this is also the same pointer. Talk about in everyday survival is the behavioral <clears throat> script. That's a term that I use. There are lots of other terms for it, like procedural learning, but essentially what it means is that you can automate behavior. Uh, the simplest example is tying your shoes. Everybody can tie their shoes, you know, without thinking. You can do it automatically. But if you try to teach a three-year-old to tie his shoes, it's a very laborious process. It takes a lot of work to get him to do it. Once <clears throat> he learns to do it, he won't have to think about it again. This is a challenge of exposure therapy to get enough reps <clears throat> to build a new response pattern to abusers and to build a new response pattern to your inner child. It has to be reps to build a new pattern, so it anchors. But this is an interesting system because it takes something that requires all of your attention and it turns it into something that requires none of your attention. So that's a key thing in there. One of the examples I use in the book of this system in operation tripping us up is of a famous rock climber named Lynn Hill. Lynn Hill was uh, <clears throat> arguably the best rock climber in the world at that time. Rock and um, she was preparing to warm up, to climb a fairly easy uh, a cliff. And she was just tying her harness, tying her rope to her harness when she was interrupted. And she had a little conversation with somebody. And then she tied her shoes and went ahead and climbed the wall. When she got up about 72 feet, she leaned back to repel and discovered that she hadn't finished tying her rope and fell to 72 feet. Um, she would have died except she landed in the branches of some trees and, and it saved her life. What had happened there is very interesting because she had a behavioral script worked out for tying her rope. She'd had so much experience she could do it without thinking. And she had another, another behavioral script for tying her shoes which was very close to the one for tying her rope. So once she was interrupted and she tied her shoes, her brain accepted that 
as valid information that she'd finished doing what she needed to do. And without further deliberation, without further checks and balances, she went ahead and climbed with her rope untied. And I maintain that most of us are like uh, Lynn Hill. We have an untied knot somewhere in our lives, and it's just waiting for us to put our weight on it. But by thinking through these things, thinking about these systems and how they control us, we begin to... <clears throat> so there was a ritual of tying her harness and then tying the, her shoes, and then when her shoes were tied, she's safe and she's done. <clears throat> so shoes tied, finished. <clears throat> she gets <clears throat> interrupted. So she doesn't <clears throat> finish the tying here. She ties her shoes and then she's done, right? <clears throat> so, link it to codependence. You're behaviorally scripted to beat up your inner child. You're behaviorally scripted to self-hate. Energetically, you can judge and social sanction, tone police your inner child. So it makes sense to tone police Will Smith's inner child. It's easy. It feels the same. You're behaviorally scripted. This is what you do. This is what you're confident at. But behaviorally scripting to judge the inner child of your abuser, to judge your abuser, to stand up to your abuser, to shun your abuser, to reject your parent. Totally danger. That's not safe. You've been scripted, conditioned. Never go there. Shut down, freeze, retreat, be paralyzed. Jada Smith can't judge her too much. You can give her labels, but you can't fully engage her, attack her, because parent abuser was always too big. You're a tiny young person, this is a giant person, you've never had confidence to stand up to your parent because you were a kid. <laughs> you have a continual script of always losing. Not only that, you were parentified. So you have a continual habitual script to always try to parent, try to take care of your parents and her child. No amount of me intellectually conditioning you or watching videos is going to break that script. Especially if you have more childhood trauma, so you're going to be even a bigger uh, terror and don't go there because you've had your whole world was collapsed, you were suffocated, chaos Everything blew up, so it was... These emotional flashbacks are supercharged, super dangerous, super taboo. That's partially Richard Grannon's resentment. He's got resentment for his childhood abusers. And he just flights away. Adren adrenophile. He doesn't fully sit with his core childhood wounds. But it's hard for me to fully reverse engineer this because I don't really have childhood <laughs> fears of standing up to my parents and getting crushed. So I can't fully relate to the paralysis <laughs> of parentification, all the trauma. I have adult traumas, so I know what trauma feels like in an adult and being beat up by other adults. I don't have childhood traumas for me to fully relate to the level of the par paralysis. But I also don't have that filtering my objectivity of evaluating other people. But at the same time, I might not have the same compassion. If, oh, so Gabe had childhood trauma. Okay. <laughs> So I threw that potential argument, I think, in some of the online threads or 
having compassion for Dave or having compassion to the parent, how much for you as a child are you responsible for your parent's inner child? If it's a question of survival, very completely with certain parents. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's mm -hmm. just physics. Yeah, and now as fine. an adult now, do you still carry that burden? Yeah. Is that a antiquated program that can be redirected to something else? This is, I don't have models. Richard Grannon has, an, I don't know, people have broken out of this, but from an efficiency, efficiency standpoint, <laughs> if you're grown up and you have these old models of parentification, it's a worthless program now. Yes, I will need re-traumatization because it's a strong program. Yeah, and it's a very difficult the program for me to see to break because if it's been conditioned as a this is dangerous this is what i must do well, you can't just know. tell yourself to fix it it's, it's not working because reconditioning it's, it's, that script is going to be really hard yeah. yeah because it has to do with responsibility and it's not only the parents but it's also culture especially here in europe extra conditions that we need to take care of parents. Well, well I still take care of my mom, but I'm not responsible for her inner child. Mm. Yeah. Is that because she doesn't force you to be? It's because our Family dynamic is everybody's inner child is is our, on our own. We're all emotional islands. <laughs> Me and my brothers, we don't deal with each other's emotions. I, we, I, <laughs> the norm is just you're on your own as far as emotions. We handle the roles of the family, the physical part, the rituals. But emotional life is... A desert. No, it's not here. Here we, we need to take care of uh, parents' well being. That means also emotionally. Oh, excuse me. I think I. Interrupted. Go ahead, Ivan. No, I'm just asking if which beach is going to Virginia Beach. Oh. Cool. Have fun. So this is it's not really you have a skill, you have a concern to love people that are horrible. I think that came up with Ellie's skill of loving people that scapegoated her or the ancestors dumped crap on her. <laughs> still, she's still able to have love for that. That's a, that's a very unique skill. So <laughs> my holistic approach is trying to see how to redirect that to something more useful. Not to say that's all bad, but until you recognize there's a pattern that's inefficient <laughs> or you recognize there's a paralysis that you have that's not serving you now. Recognizing that pattern can sort of interrupt it, then you can redirect it to something more lively, something more useful. Uh, but if you're able to scape the, scapegoat the group as an abstract, tone police the group to recreate the sense of control and family system order, that's just keeping the same game, same repetition portion in the game going.
Who do I do that? Uh, well, Brad was more. Yeah, it's probably me. <laughs> I mean, I, I think. Yeah, this one was aimed straight at straight at me, and I and I think I can take that one. I think you've got a point because I think Deef and I sort of spoke about this, and I, I sort of it's taken me a week to process it, right? And I think I'm I'm starting to lean into what he's saying, um, which is that how do I how do I put it? I put it to him that one of the ways I healed and I dealt with my mother was to get to a point of forgiveness and see her as a certain you know, little old lady and a, and a little abused girl that was abused by my grandmother, blah, blah, blah. And that was sort of what I projected onto Gabriel, which is Jesus Christ, you're a monster, but I can see this other thing. And I think where Deep's going is take that another step further, which is to say, well, perhaps that is no longer necessary. That step is now redundant and you can go to the next level. So when I went to the group and said, yet again, blah, 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 I was projecting that onto them, onto the group unfairly and not sort of owning it myself. So I think that's probably where that got too deep. Is that about right? Well, it's a mental shortcut. So yeah. Gabriel felt like your mother, the way you organized her, you shortcut to her, but in order for that to fit, yeah. So what you I've had done to counterbalance I, onto yeah, the group. Gotcha. I needed to settle the group down to make sure, yeah, because I could, I could see the. That's why I um, dissociated, because that's how I say, like, yeah, it's, it's just not even worth dealing with. So I got, I got that bit right, right. Saw him. I didn't get the emotional charge around it very much, but I just saw him as a, just a what did I call him? An emotional, a, a drama queen, histrionic, emotional bedwetter. Um, bedwetter. Yeah, yeah bedwetter. But when it came, it was that moment at the end when I jumped in and had a go at the group. I think that was the twist that no one saw coming, which is I'd, I'd actually seen that, I'd, I'd done that projecting. Yeah, I can wear that. Uh, <clears throat> but that seems to make more sense for the uh, extra energy behind what you were doing. Or yeah, the lingering yeah, energy of how long it stuck. That means there's something more symbolic if you're wasting more mental energy and yeah, finding this like position. A, it's over-engineered. Yeah, you're right. It's over-engineered. And you, if you take that bit out, where I've done the mummy dearest, aren't you, poor little old lady thing, and you just assume that's the case, and you take that step out, then you can, you can go straight through. I see what you mean. Jesus, this took a long time. <laughs> Fuck. No, this is hard. Yeah, it's bloody hard. This is not easy to to, to do. Because <clears throat> I hung on for a while, and it's like, yeah, last 20 minutes, not, not so much. Because <laughs> underneath is you wanted to, you still love your mom, your abuser, your parents. That intense emotion is still libido, life force. Yeah, but from afar. Like, but I think, again, it's like you're engineered. Mm -hmm. you, you sort of, it's this complicated, I love you from afar, but you're a monster, blah, blah, blah. And it's a bit sort of... Mm. But you're paralyzed up close. That's the danger shortcut. Yes. <laughs> that's conditioned in your brain. So anybody Ooh. else who reminds you of that same energy... Yeah. That's the You respond the same way. It's a mental yeah. shortcut. So that familiarity, that level of intensity does the same thing to me each time I shut down, dissociate, mm -hmm. wait for it to go through and then say, yeah, you, yeah, I, that this, when I was away a few weeks ago down at Coldcliffe and the crazy woman downstairs, same routine. I'm hiding in the attic like Anne Frank, right? I'm, I'm up there in the attic, she's downstairs and I'm doing the same routine. It's effective in a way, but it's not terribly you're paralyzed by the pattern the repetition yeah. oh, and the feeling and funny thing is Steve, the feeling at Coldcliffe with her downstairs was exactly the same as i got from gabriel last week same mm -hmm. feeling. it's right there in the solar plexus and... <laughs> you've been very patient with me over this one thank you <laughs> well that's huge though if this is something that's uh can shift that pattern this was a, a 
a helpless pattern, a learned helpless, helplessness pattern, which is reasonable for your childhood, but it's continued <laughs> with new people where you're adult to adult, where it's an overreaction. Yeah, I'm a 55-year-old man, not a kid that needs his, needs his mother's protection <clears throat> or shelter or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't need to pretend all that other bullshit that she's, you know, she really does love me in a very fucked up way. That's all bullshit. <laughs> That's just something I tell myself. She wouldn't know me if she fell over me at the moment. <laughs> Thank you. Message received. This is like apologies a controversial... For the, apologies to the group um, for my uh, misjudgment of that situation at the end. I got two-thirds of it right, however, in my own defense. So sometimes there's a PTSD... Uh, that, CBT therapy, where they guide the person back to relive the abuse or the abuser or like sexual assault. And then they'll guide the sexual assault victim to become a victor, to fight back and crush the guy's penis and punch him and beat him up. And the therapist or David Burns will talk about letting the patient get violent, just let whatever she wanted to do in the visualization. And then after the visualization, she got a new story. So instead of being paralyzed by the, the rape, the new story is she's able to stand up to the abuser, beat him up and become a victor, visualize. And then PTSD was gone. Yeah. I shared it's this like at, at a spiritual, yeah. uh, new age group with three therapists and three of them were in like in shock. I go, that's horrible. You can't, <laughs> the aggression's all bad. <laughs> yeah it's sort of you can you can it's like it's trapped and then you've got to smack it with a hammer to smash it there's like, a yeah. paralysis helpless pattern that's there if you don't revisit the trauma and become more agency or undanger the that place you are forever scared of that anything that reminds you of that trigger and it's interesting with BPD Mark, I didn't have the same feeling, so I was laser focused. He's a different breed of cat. <clears throat> yes, but Kurt was a wimp. Right, Kurt was a wimp. <laughs> then in Gabriel, Gabriel's my flavor as far as reminding me of mother, mother, and that's my kryptonite still. Although I did have my overly engineered workaround, which the group paid for in the end. There you go. Because nice. your body is going to, your instincts is going to spot danger. And if it's labeled something totally dangerous and you paralyze, that's a pattern. And that pattern is hard to break. Yeah. But only the group could do, handle this. If you were to do this in one-on-one -on -one therapy... The therapist wouldn't have enough context <laughs> and there wouldn't be enough multiple voices to try to fill in the gaps for you. So well, you would just yeah, you'd keep never running. You never keep get running. to go out on a limb like this, right? And had I not dealt with my ego, I probably would have defended it. <laughs> that ship sailed. Yeah, I had, this is interesting. I thought I dealt with the mother stuff and there's still residue and there probably is, is even, yeah, I know. Thanks, Chantal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Comes again and then there in that corner is Another again. Bit, yep. then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This. yeah. This one was a bit of a whopper though. So that's why I think, and I, I think Gabriel was a bit of a gift and I know he's probably not doing the same level of processing, but that's how I view this. Mm. It's a bit of a gift. Yeah, 